Okay, so we saw the balloon expand. The balloon expanded because as we removed the gas from outside, the pressure outside the balloon decreased. This meant that there was less force pushing in on the balloon. So as the pressure inside the balloon didn't change at that point, there was the same force pushing out. So the outwards force was then larger than the inwards force, and this caused the balloon to expand until it reached a new equilibrium where the inwards and outwards forces were equal to each other. So that is why the balloon expanded. So let's now let the air back into this container. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is actually add some extra air into the container. So just have a think about what's going to happen when we push extra air into the container, increasing the pressure around the balloon. Can you see how this causes the balloon to contract even further until the lid popped off because of the pressure pushing up on the lid? The relationship between pressure and volume was first noted by Boyle, so it's known as Boyle's Law. You don't need to remember the name of that law, but you do need to know how to apply it. Boyle's Law tells us that pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So we can write this as pressure is equal to some constant of proportionality divided by the volume. This is at a constant temperature. Okay, let's have a look at another couple of demonstrations showing Boyle's Law. What I've got here is a container. I can change the volume of the container by turning this knob here. And it's connected to a pressure gauge, which tells me the pressure inside the container. So let's start by decreasing the volume of the container. You can see that as I'm decreasing the volume, the pressure is increasing. Now let's try increasing the volume of the container by twisting the knob the other way. And you can see as I turn it the other way and the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so what I have here is a pressure gauge and it's measuring the pressure of this air in here. So for this demo, remember it's the air that we're looking at rather than the oil. So we can read off the volume of the air here and there's a bike pump here to increase the pressure of the air. So what we're going to do is as we do this demo, we're going to plot a little graph showing how pressure and volume are related. Okay, so to start with, we've got what's, well, it says zero kilopascals in there and we've got a volume of air of 47 centimetres cubed. So let's slowly increase that pressure. Okay, so now we've got a pressure reading of around about 40 kilopascals, quite a lot of uncertainty in these numbers, and we've got a volume of 34 millilitres or centimetres cubed. Okay, we've increased the pressure again, so now it's around about 60 kilopascals and the volume of air is 30 centimetres cubed. Pressure is now approximately 100 kilopascals and the volume of air has gone down to 25 centimetres cubed. Okay, we're now at about 130 kilopascals and the volume of air is about 21 centimetres cubed. Okay, let's slowly decrease the pressure. Okay, so, so we can get some more results for our graph on the way back down. We're now at 90 kilopascals and the volume of air is 25 centimetres cubed. We're at 70 kilopascals and the volume of air is around about 33 centimetres cubed. We're down to 40 kilopascals and the volume of air is 35 centimetres cubed and we've gone to 10 kilopascals and the volume of air is now around about 42 centimetres cubed. So when we plot these on the graph, you can see that it is roughly hyperbolic. 
It's not exactly right because of the large uncertainties involved in this experiment. If you want, you can go and predict what those uncertainties should be.